First reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8, reading verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the next reading is from the first epistle of John, chapter 3, reading verses 19 to 24. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask, because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thanks, Sandra. I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Andrew. Well, good morning, everyone. I have the privilege, I think, of giving you the message this morning one that I do accept humbly, asking the Holy Spirit to bless these words as they fall on your ears today. So let's pray together before I begin. Loving God, we know you are here with us this morning and we pray that your Holy Spirit will give us the ability to listen and understand what it is you are wanting us to know deeply in our hearts. Amen. Well, Matthew reminded us last week that the first four weeks of January are devoted to the passages in the Bible that relate to the times when Jesus called his disciples to follow him. However, I'm not following up on the fourth week, but rather speaking about how those of us who have answered the call to follow Jesus in our lives might have security in being Jesus' followers. How can we do this then? There are some suggestions in how we live by the fruits of the Spirit, as found in Galatians. Paul lists nine specific behaviours. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These result from the work of the Holy Spirit in a Christian's life. Now, this seems to be a huge challenge to live in this way, but these behaviours are ones we can strive for if we want to show the love of Jesus in our lives and in so doing it can lead us to know that security, the security that comes when we trust God in all areas of our lives. Many years ago, I was given the unexpected joy of leading a weekend conference for women And to this day, I am still so grateful that I was trusted with this role. There were probably about 40 women in attendance at this weekend, as well as many team members who supported me and used their God-given gifts and talents to encourage the participants in their Christian lives. Every day at these conferences, there were talks given by team members, and on the last day, the leader gave her talk, that was me, to pull them together. My talk was about having total security. And as I summed up the weekend, this talk was meant to send everyone away with a strong conviction of God's love and grace in their lives. So today, I thought I would bring you this message, removing anything relevant to that conference, because it was only for women, but keeping everything that might encourage us to remember God's love and his never-ending grace towards us. Well, total security, what does that mean? 
I'm reminded of a very little girl in creche at church who was too timid to come down the little slippery dip on her own. But one day I knelt at the bottom of the slide and I put my arms up to her and promised I would catch her when she got to the bottom. She had several false starts. She would let herself move forward just a tiny bit, clutching the sides of the slide and then pull herself back to where she felt safe again. This went on for some time. She wasn't feeling secure, but then suddenly she decided she could trust me and she let go. Down she went. I caught her as I promised and the squeal of delight as she realised she was safe was so beautiful. She was beaming all over saying, I did it, I did it. That little girl learnt the meaning of security that morning. She now knew that I wouldn't let her fall and from then on it was a continual trip to the slide, enjoying the feeling of overcoming her fear. I wonder what total security means for you. Could it be a security alarm system fitted in your home and car? Is it the thought that the pilot carrying you across the sky in a huge passenger plane from one destination to another has been well trained and is not feeling sleepy? Maybe it's a hefty superannuation package guaranteeing financial security forever. There are possibly 101 things that will cause us to feel secure in our lives. However, many of these things rely on the talents of other people, such as the person installing that, installing that security system, flying the plane, the wealth management person having financial wisdom and know-how. And of course, there are other areas in your lives and mine that will bring security that will depend on someone else being reliable for us. Remember way back in September 2001, when terrorists changed the world forever. The men and women who went to work in the Twin Towers that day would probably have felt quite secure about the safety of their workplaces. And not only New York City, but Washington and Pennsylvania were attacked and this was unthinkable. After all, this was Uncle Sam territory, a land of peace and freedom, a proud, strong country. But in an instant, their world came crashing down. Thousands of lives were lost, families destroyed, and the world's economy plummeted with the threat of more terrorism and wars brewing on the horizon. What happened to the world's feeling of security that day? And as time has gone on, we can see that not much has changed. Wars are raging in Europe and the Middle East, and there seems no end to any of them. The innocent citizens of these countries have no security as the armed forces move in and destroy everything they hold dear, including their loved ones. Our world leaders can't offer us total security. Our defence forces can't protect us forever. And our local police forces are limited in numbers and hampered by the growing ability to access firearms, knives and drugs that make their job even more difficult. So what happens? If all these departments can't offer us total security, despite their amazing training and best efforts, then where do we find it? Well, I expect you've already guessed that my next suggestion would be that security can be found in our relationship with God. I'm going to speak a little of my own life now and I hope that there will be something in my story that will encourage you and that you will forgive me for talking about myself and my own journey or at least part of it. Is God your security? He certainly is mine now, but in the past I didn't always see it that way. Before our first son Andrew was born, we lost three babies, all at very advanced stages of the pregnancies. We were on an emotional roller coaster, one month rejoicing in the news that I was pregnant, and then after many, many months in the depths of despair once again, as we lost the little one who was fast becoming part of our lives. 
At this stage in my life, I wasn't placing all my trust in God. Oh yes, I knew he was there, but I was way too busy living in the moment to include God too much. However, I had praying parents, and I'm sure that their prayers were upholding us and giving us the strength we so badly needed. Roger and I moved to Canberra to live as an obstetrician who we were advised to see work there. God had it all in hand. We didn't know, but he did. Rog was able to get a position in a different department of telecom and we found accommodation close to the city where he worked and the obstetrician had his rooms. With much joy, the doctor discovered the problem very quickly and within the year we were blessed with our firstborn living child. And as our next two children were born, we were overjoyed. And as you can imagine, life got even busier and busier as we moved from Canberra back to the coast and my old hometown. And I still wasn't including God totally in my life. But again, God had a plan. This time he put a very special lady in my path. She was the Anglican minister's wife and we became friends through carpooling to take our little charges to preschool. As Andrew became old enough for Sunday school, Rog started taking him there on a Sunday morning and would spend a peaceful hour, while I was home with the others, catching up on news and sport in the Sunday papers while he waited for Sunday school to finish. I began to develop an interest in returning to the church where I was baptised, went to Sunday school, was confirmed, went to youth group. This led me to have more contact with my friend Jan, the minister's wife. And as she gently encouraged me, God became very real in my life again. As the children grew up, they all attended Sunday school and with much joy for me, Rog became a Christian also. And from there, God has been a central part of our family life. As Christian parents, we pray regularly for our children and their children and trust that one day they will all know how much security they have, can have in including God in their daily lives. We have much joy in knowing that our eldest grandson has recommitted his life to the Lord and is powering on in his growing faith and awareness of God's hand in his life. But back to my story. As our children grew up and became more independent, I became fearful for them because I couldn't protect them any longer. I still had some lessons to learn about trusting God. And that's when I realised that I needed to trust him totally for our children as well. Of course, there have been many trials in their lives, and I recall just one of the many times I paced the floor in anguish and railed at God because he hadn't protected my child. But isn't God good? He forgave me for those bouts of arrogance and anger. For me, it is so special to know that God is there, that he is watching over us and that I can put my trust in him for my children and now my ten grandchildren and one great-grandchild. And I can know that whatever happens, God will be there for them. In the Bible, in 1 John 3, we are told... How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. What a privilege it is to know that we are God's children and in bringing our children to God in prayer, we know that he loves them too. We will be singing God is our strength and our refuge, our present help in times of trouble after this message. I ask you to take note of the words and understand how true those words are. He is always there for us. All we have to do is trust in him and bring our prayer, cares and concerns to him in prayer. That will bring security. I recall one evening when our three children were young. We just had moved house and there was a massive electrical storm raging around our new home. In the darkness, everything lit up as the lightning flashed across the sky. The thunder was booming, and at this point, our children still slept. However, 
one huge flash of lightning followed by a vibrating crash of thunder set the doorbell ringing and then cut the power. In an instant, we had three children between us in our bed. They all knew they would be safe and secure with us, protected from the savage elements raging outside. Of course, now they're all adults with children of their own and don't need our protection or a safe place between us in our bed, which is just as well because they wouldn't fit. But just as we were there for our children, our Heavenly Father is there for us. But the difference is, we don't outgrow our need for his protection and the security he offers us. So to sum up, we are aware that our world leaders, governments, police and armed forces, and even each other cannot offer total security. There is only one way that we can ever feel that security and that is in the complete love the Lord has for each one of us. Sometimes it's difficult to understand why things happen in our lives that aren't good, events that bring us pain and sadness, and the question, where is security in this? Well, in the Bible reading we heard earlier, and I believe the Bible to be true, we are told in Romans 38, 39, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our total and eternal security is based on God's love for those who have faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Our eternal security is promised by the Father and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Amen.